so let's say Klaus tomorrow you decide, you know what, I don't want to maintain this anymore. I don't want to be the author of it anymore. Mm-hmm. How does how is ownership transferred? to responsibility how is responsibility let's put it that way how is responsibility transferred and then oriel i want to go to you on the how do you yeah. overcome the correct it's, it's production ready question but klaus how, how, how is responsibility for a node transferred if klaus landsdorf tomorrow decides i i don't want to maintain this anymore i don't want to lead the maintenance of it anymore yeah so there's one point, um, we can just let it open source. And uh, the way also for the NPM is really great in that because we had it also, we asked for a package and said, hey, nobody maintains the package over a year. What can we do with the package? And they said, hey, please, there's an email, ask the author if they want to get your contributions, your pull requests, whatever, to bring it in the software. And if they don't do, then we are open to hand over the package to you. And that's really a great opportunity in open source to say, hey, we really want to take care about this package and the community can take it over. And uh, and that's so it's never lost, let's say. You know, we had also the point where I was really angry because somebody in a, it was really a bad day for me. And, uh, and at that day, somebody called me on my private phone and said, hey, you have to, to, to fix this. Hey, did you see the issue that I give you on GitHub? Hey, hey, did you hear me? I have a customer. I, it has to work tomorrow. Now, do it. Do it. And I really screamed on the phone and said, hey, are you crazy? It's open source. Just do it. Go to the code. Send me pull requests. I will implement it. I will make the release. That's it. Um, really crazy story. And that was the point to say, okay, I'm making my master thesis at the moment. I stopped this. Really <laughs> took the code off from GitHub because people were going crazy in that time. It's also what we see in Node-RED. Every two or three years, we have a period like Bitcoin. So <laughs> that yeah. no threat is the new uh, gold rush um, situation. <clears throat> yeah, and that, that is the story behind. Uh, and there it was really hard maybe for people to get to our code. But if they had asked us, uh, it was also the point to say, we can give the code to you. By the way, I've modified it. I've modified it significantly in testing environments to, you know, um, I've never made a pull request saying, I think you should incorporate my changes, but I have modified it significantly. I mean, I, for me, I, I default to, I'll just go ahead and take the code and modify, spe- specifically how browsing is handled in the node, for example. I, it was how I, I personally modified it. But Oriel, on the production ready piece, how do you overcome that objection? Yeah. I, I wanna talk about an anecdotal thing, sort of how it drove home my realization that node run is, is ready for production. But yeah, yeah, completely, completely agree. Yeah, this question uh, appears once and again in in the conversations. Okay, but uh, the first thing that I recap with them it is what's the alternative? Alternative is go to a proprietary com- appliance or a proprietary uh, application where I have no chance to overpass whatever problem that I have, and usually it's quite complicated to find the proper person for receiving the the necessary support. I mean, uh, I have two, three fun situations that I lived with IBM and Siemens. I lost projects with in front of them, okay? And the afternoon after the meeting, I received a call from them saying, can you set up what we won this morning in front of you? I say, what? You, you won? Why do I have to do that for you? Because we don't have engineers for doing what we sold. Yeah, oh, but by the way, we say this all the time. I, I'm, okay. I'm very... Oh, then smoke. overpass that. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. What's the idea? What's the idea? What I'm trying to say, it is, from one side, the alternative is not very good. The other thing, as Klaus already said, is yes, maybe you are not, uh, you don't have the skills for uh, using that uh uh, that code and do whatever or fixing whatever is not working good enough in this project for you. Yes, but you have integrators. And this is where you put your uh, your commitment where, where, with who you are uh, confident, okay? So you have to be confident in people who can give you solutions in whatever integration or in whatever uh, project that you are working with. So makes sense what I'm saying? But yes. it's the idea it is, if I am uh, contracting a company 
for doing whatever project in my company. And the only thing that they can do is just uh, configuring some pieces. Maybe they don't really know what they are doing. They're just configuring some pieces. And I think, uh, and, and they already know that it's not enough. Because of that, they started learning programming Visual Basic a, l a long time ago. Okay, because it's not enough with the typical automation tools for solving the, the issues that we have in manufacturing. Then uh, this is just another way of, follow, of following that. So uh, do you ask if C or C++ or Python is uh, good enough or production ready? Why don't you ask that? It's exactly the same question. You are comparing Node-RED with, uh, I don't know, whatever IoT gateway that you can buy in a, in, a, in, a, in a price list. And you have to compare that with Python. Right. I mean, yeah. it's a programming language. It's a framework that allows you to develop solutions. Instead of programming with raw code, you can program in flow programming. It's another way of thinking, fast way of solving issues that you have in front and easy to maintain, as I said before. So how can it, how can, the discussion be focused on the programming language. The discussion it's, has to be focused on the solution. 